Last year, the Green Bay Packers did something that didn't only completely baffle Green Bay Packers fans, but it also happened to baffle a good majority of NFL fans. Sitting at the number 30 pick in the 2020 NFL Draft, the Green Bay Packers had the Tennessee Titans, Baltimore Ravens, and Seattle Seahawks in front of them and felt like they had this need to trade up to the 26th pick. Once they did that, one had to wonder why on earth they were making such a move. Were they targeting? getting one of the many gifted wideouts in this NFL draft. After all, T. Higgins, Michael Pittman Jr., and Chase Claypool were still all on the board. So you can imagine the surprise when they traded up to the 26th pick so they could select Jordan Love. And immediately, many of us were surprised because Aaron Rodgers threw for 26 touchdowns and only four interceptions in his first year with Matt LaFleur and took the Green Bay Packers all the way to the NFC championship against a loaded San Francisco 49ers team. And that move looked even more ridiculous as Aaron Rodgers took it a step further, completing his greatest season in probably his entire career when he threw for 4,299 yards and completed an absurd 71% of his passes. And I guess they have a little bit of buyer's remorse, especially after that remarkable season and Aaron Rodgers once again being able to make it all the way to the end. NFC Championship and losing to a team that was fully loaded at each and every position. So what's going on guys, your boy Mike here. Before we get to everything, just do me a favor and sack that like button for the YouTube algorithm. Just leaving a like on this video does wonders by pushing this out to a brand new audience. Bear in mind, I've been doing this despite getting copyright claims from the NFL. So just leaving a like to make sure a brand new audience sees this means the world to me. Now that we get all of that out of the way, break. Mike check one, two, one, two. What's going on everybody? When people compare the Aaron Rodgers pick in 2005 to the Jordan Love pick of 2020, I squirm inside because I watched both drafts and they are nothing alike whatsoever. In the 2005 NFL draft, Aaron Rodgers was a potential number one overall pick. It was literally between him and Alex Smith. And when Alex Smith was selected, that was perceived as a huge shock to the entire NFL. And the Green Bay Packers didn't even need to trade up for Aaron Rodgers. He just fell to their laps and said, okay, no big deal. We have an older quarterback. Why not take a flyer on this kid? He was gonna be the number one overall pick in this year's NFL draft. He does have some issues with his throwing mechanics. Let's have him sit back and hopefully develop him for the future. And we have a whole video on the entire controversy surrounding Brett Favre and Aaron Rodgers when he was a rookie. It's our most viewed video on this channel, so I highly recommend you check it out if you want more info about that. But in this scenario, Jordan Love wasn't really perceived as one of the top quarterbacks in the NFL draft. As a matter of fact, he was perceived as a bit of a reach at that position because he was a huge developmental prospect. And spending a first round pick on a player that you want to develop for the future when your team was literally one game away from the Super Bowl and not capitalizing upon Aaron Rodgers' prime, which apparently the ages of 36 to 40 are the brand new primes for NFL quarterbacks, rubbed a lot of fans the wrong way. And what's even more interesting about this is apparently the Green Bay Packers may be feeling the same way. So if you're a New England Patriots fan, there's one thing you can agree upon. Year one without Tom Brady didn't really go as expected. And it's not necessarily anyone on the Patriots' fault. The team just wasn't good. Even with Tom Brady, they weren't nearly as good as they were during those Super Bowl runs. Not to mention multiple of their pro bowlers sat out and there were significant holes on the entire roster. But probably the biggest question mark on the New England Patriots is who is going to be their quarterback of the future? Yes, they have Cam Newton, a former MVP. But when you look at the way Cam Newton plays 
plays football. Clearly, he is not the player he once was. He can't make the throws he once was able to make, and he's not nearly as durable as he once was. Although I am personally really rooting for Cam Newton. I love Cam Newton. I love his confidence. I love his story, and I love his determination. But if I'm looking at it from a general manager's perspective, I am not comfortable just going into the regular season, trotting out Cam Newton and Jarrett Stidham. So with that being said, it's a foregone conclusion that the New England Patriots might target a quarterback with their first round pick. Now, bear in mind, this is a team that has a ton of holes, and this is a draft that is going to feature quarterbacks going with the top three picks and even potentially in five within the top 12 picks. Theoretically speaking, the Atlanta Falcons, Detroit Lions, Carolina Panthers, Denver Broncos, and Philadelphia Eagles all could potentially select a quarterback in this year's NFL draft, aside from the 49ers, the Jets, and the Jaguars, which are surefire locks to select a quarterback in this year's draft. And although I don't really necessarily think that the Falcons would take a quarterback with a number four pick, despite having a fairly good quarterback already, or the Lions or Panthers taking a quarterback after just recently trading for a quarterback, it's still something that could potentially happen. And the Patriots are sitting all the way at the number 15 spot. So there was this report from a Twitter page called Gillette Nation that featured this picture, which in my opinion is extremely sketchy. And this picture is just a desk, which conveniently has a paper with the NFL Shield logo and the Green Bay Packers logo right next to it, which gets cut off completely. And then at the very bottom, you see a chart. When you zoom in on the chart, well, you see in very blurry wording, a chart that says transaction type, and then I can't really make out the rest of the chart, but you could see zero, zero, zero all the way to the right underneath the margin that says club. And then you see the New England Patriots, you see first trade, then you see QB love, R1 P29. And I'm gonna go out and start by saying, this is so sketchy. Like there's so much about this that just rubs me the wrong way. You mean you just happen to get a picture of a binder that only shows a Green Bay Packers logo and an NFL Shield logo on a sheet of paper, mind you. And then underneath there's just a random margin that says the Green Bay Packers are open to trading Jordan Love in order to trade up in the NFL draft. Well, since news is slow right now, and this is something that actually makes sense in my head, I'm gonna give you a lowdown about what I believe is gonna go down here. So would the Green Bay Packers trade Jordan Love? I think there's a very legitimate possibility that they would if the right offer came along, because Jordan Love has been an afterthought in Green Bay after the remarkable season Aaron Rodgers just had. But at the same time, this trade would make a lot of sense. Say the New England Patriots are at the number number 15 spot. They're sitting down and they're getting ready to make a pick. Trevor Lawrence, Zach Wilson, Justin Fields are all off the board and the Atlanta Falcons or the Detroit Lions or the Carolina Panthers decided to surprise the entire world and select Trey Lance as a developmental prospect because, well, Trey Lance does need some development before he actually takes the football field. And although I don't necessarily think either of those teams should take a developmental QB in the top 10, we're speaking in hypotheticals in this situation. So now you're the New England Patriots and you're making the number 15 pick. And on the board is either Devontae Smith or Jalen Waddell or a very good offensive tackle prospect like Tevin Jenkins or Christian Derrissaw. All players that the Green Bay Packers could desperately use because their offensive line isn't what it once was and they need to do whatever it takes to get Aaron Rodgers some help. But the Green Bay Packers need to move up 14 spots. And in order to move up that much, they're gonna need to give up more than just their first round pick this year. So giving up last year's first round pick, which is exactly what the Patriots would have ideally taken here, a developmental QB, that could sit behind Cam Newton would be extremely ideal for them. The proposed trade is the Patriots trading down from pick 15 to acquire Jordan Love, the 29th pick, and a fourth round pick. And when you're the New England Patriots, you're not necessarily in the business of, hey, we're one player away from contention. 
You're more so in the business of, hey, we have a bunch of holes on our offense and we wanna speed up our rebuild as much as possible by getting as much talent as we possibly can on this roster. Meanwhile, the Green Bay Packers might have an opportunity to take an offensive tackle or a wide receiver or something that Aaron Rodgers really needs in order to truly prolong his career. If I'm the Green Bay Packers, I'm all in on trying to prolong Aaron Rodgers' longevity. So making sure he has a top-notch offensive line is probably the top of my priority list. And honestly, I don't understand why teams are so quick to attempt to rebuild. If you execute this properly, you could easily prolong Aaron Rodgers' prime for another five years. So let me know in the comments section down below what do you guys think about this. First of all, do you buy the fact that this is a proposed trade that the Green Bay Packers are interested in making? Or do you think that some schmuck on the internet decided to make this up and post it on Twitter? Aside from that, I'm your boy Mike, and I'm dropping our mic until our next upload.